Um, so what you're seeing on the my, the screen right now is Sage Three, but to get Sage Three, you should go to this address. You can just go to that website, and you can download the client from this download link. Then you'll just select your specific operating system to download it. We have all uh, we have four. If you're not using Ubuntu on Linux, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> The weird distro, I don't, we can't support every distribution of Linux. So all we really support is Ubuntu. Yeah, so we're gonna let everybody download it. Let me know if you have any issues. If you don't have a laptop, that's fine. But I guess one question I'll ask, is has anybody used Sage before? Jason's class, have you used it? Two people? I don't know if anyone remember. Can you have like Zoom on a little side panel? And if you have issues installing it, just let me know. So we'll give people a couple minutes to install it. And as you're installing it, it's taken a while. On the, the homepage of the Sage 3, you can download a little quick start guide. This is just a PDF that kind of goes through the basic usage of Sage. Some of this stuff is maybe out of date, but it should be pretty straightforward if something doesn't look exactly the same. There's a question about the server. Uh, so yeah, we're on the Hawaii development server, which I'll get into once I give people a little time to install it. Oh, long time, no on the way. Uh, um, you give them five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Maybe one ten. Is everybody in the room installed it? Yeah. We'll just go with the room. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I can help everybody remotely. But so when you first install Sage and launch it, you'll get to this web. I'm gonna have to make that a little bigger. Oh. Oh. Or do exactly what I'm doing on this port on the main computer. So go to the hub list. <laughs> So you'll, you'll land on this as the first uh, landing page. This lists all the hubs that are within Sage. So these are essentially different servers spread out across the country. There's some in Chicago, some in Virginia Tech. Two are stationed here. It'll show you uh, how many of the users are on that server. Virginia Tech has a bug right now. There's not that many users, but we'll pretend there are. Yeah, so everybody in the room can see it now. So you'll see this screen. And if you just click Hawaii Development, it'll take you to the Hawaii Development Server. This isn't what you'll see when you log out. So this is what you'll land at for the remote people. You don't have to log out on this one. This is what you'll see the people in the room. And then if you have a UH login, you can just use the Google login. If you have a different institution to log in, you can use CI login. But you can use your UH login info using the Google login. Or you can use your personal account, which is fine too. And then once we're logged in, just let me know and then I'll keep going. Because then you'll see, when you log in for the first time, you'll see a little window that tells you to type in your username and choose a color. And then if you want to be a wall or a client, just choose client. Then hit create account. Then for the first time you log in, you won't see anything on the left-hand side. So I have a bunch of stuff because I already have accounts and boards and users. But to get to the board that we're using today, you can hit search for rooms over on the left-hand side. 
And then you should see HIDSI, Hawaii Data Science Institute, or you can search for it. And then there should be a join button here. And then once you hit join, it'll switch to member. And then it should pop up in the left-hand side now under rooms. So once you click HIDSI, so now you've like entered the room. So this is a room within Sage 3. Under rooms, there's different boards. So we're going to go to the one board that's called uh, Sage 3 Introduction. Once you're in there, you'll probably start to see people's cursors flying around. I might have mine disabled. Yep, so now you can see all our cursors flying around, who's in the board. So I'll give people a few minutes to maybe get there. If you have any questions throughout this or have any issues, please just let me know. Six chats. Alberto. I <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone on his board? Is anyone remote uh, confused by anything or need help? Um, if you ever want to know what board, server, hub, uh, room you're in, if in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see Hawaii Development, so that's the hub you're on. HIDSI, that's the room you're in. Stage 3 Introduction is the board you're in. So if you come in here and Jason's having a presentation, and he's using Sage, and you're curious, you don't want to interrupt him, you can just look up at that corner and see on the big wall which board to go to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for Kabe. Also, for people in the room, if you need, if you're using UHM and want better Wi Fi, there's that little sticky note. It's the lava Wi Fi, and that's the password underneath. See if we can do I'll just make it bigger. Good comment. Okay. So right now you see a board with a bunch of stuff on it. Some of it's stickies, some of it's a PDF, one's a web page. So everything that's a little box, it's just an application. It's kind of like Windows or Mac OS. I kind of like to think Sage is like a collaborative operating system. All the little applications are all written by students on the project and myself. If you have new ideas for applications, you can always come to them to us, pitch them or Make them yourself. It's all open source project. So the first thing you'll see is this little controller. So this is where you can access different 
panels that we call them within Sage. So this first one called users. So these are all the users on the board. So you can see which users are on this board with you right now. So uh, RJ, are you in this? No. So this color wall is the big wall that's in front of us in the in the room right now. So if I actually click that, I can follow them or make them follow me. So I'm going to make the wall follow me. Now, as I zoom on my laptop, the wall matches. If I want to stop them from following me, I can click them and hit unfollow. So if you're like teaching and presentation and you have a bunch of clap students in the board with you and you want them paying attention, you can force everybody to follow. So if I click my avatar, force everybody to follow me, all your laptops are now going to be tied to whatever I'm doing. And as I move around, everybody's following me. So this is how you can keep students on focus, everybody in your meeting in focus, or just have everybody uh, together. I don't know how else to put it, but it's also a way to control the wall without having to touch the keyboard like RJ is doing. So that's like the users panel. This next one is the applications panel. So these are all the applications that you can create with on Sage. So if you were to just create Click sticky, you're gonna end up creating a sticky right in the middle. You can also drag these out. Okay, chaos is about to ensue, but that's fine. Use Sage, but if I click and hold the sticky icon and drag it out, where I drop it is where it will be created. People are creating all types of stuff now. So like how I said, it, it's kind of like Google Docs on steroids. There's one called Notepad. If I bring in Notepad, and then I zoom into Notepad and start typing in here. And RJ does the same thing. So multiple people can type into this Notepad together. So it's kind of just like Google Docs. All the stickies are like this too. You can Everybody can multi-type into stickies and stuff. But every application kind of has this mindset that it's collaborative. Everybody can do the same things and everybody kind of syncs. So this little PDF, this is the quick start getting getting started guide that we had. If I cycle through this on my laptop, you'll see it cycling up on the big display wall. So every, everything's kind of trying to stay in sync. So everybody sees the same thing. So like I keep saying, collaborative type operating system. And we can go into all the other apps when we get to, we have a little board called the Playground, which I guess you guys have already kind of turned this into, but plugins I'll, I'll get to later. And kernels I'll get to later. Um, I'll go to annotations, which is this little drawing one on the bottom. So this opens a little annotations panel, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can draw on the back of the board. You can draw all over apps. You can change the opacity and the width of the, the marker. It's just like any other drawing app. Any lines you want to get rid of, you can highlight, hover your cursor over it, and then right click it, and it should disappear. Or that feature, it's not there. But, and then the last little panel I'll get into for right now is the navigation panel. So this is just a little mini map of the whole uh, board right now. And you can hover over these icons, these little app icons, and it'll tell you like what this app is. And then if you click it, it'll jump straight to it. And these other buttons on the left side, you can zoom out with this, you can reset the zoom level. Uh, you can show all the apps so your screen will Zoom all the way out to be able to fit all the apps on your. And you might be seeing this big purple box that keeps moving around. 
So RJ can't really see it. You can see it on our little screen share on Zoom. So that's actually RJ's keyboard. So I can always know what the wall is seeing based off of that viewport. So if I took this sticky note that's over here and put it up in the upper left-hand corner of that blue or that purple box, now it's all the way up there in that corner. She might not be able to see to that pillar, but I'll move it to the other side. It's showing up. Is this lining up? So that's like the viewport of the wall. If you have a wall and you need to have a user become a wall, sorry, I'm kind of jumping around. You can always go back and edit your account. So this bottom left-hand corner shows your, there's a little main menu button and there's a lot of options under here. But if you had an account, when you first signed up, this is the screen that you saw, you can see, uh, you can change your name and then you can change your color. You can also make yourself a wall. And if I did that, now you'll see my viewport everywhere. So now on RJ screen, you can see my little viewport moving around. And that's just what my laptop can see. I'm gonna change myself back to a client. If all these like cursors moving around and all this stuff is aggravating, you can go to that main menu button out at the bottom and hit visibility. You can disable cursors, viewports, applications, titles, even other stuff. But now the board's a little less chaotic for my viewport. Uh, so yeah, what's in the specific apps? Um, should I go through all the apps? So you can see that there's some PDFs up on the board. Do you want to bring in a new PDF? Let's say Hold on. Let me make sure I don't drop something inappropriate. HSEO. Okay. So this this is just a file on my operating system, this PDF document. If you want to add a file to the board, you can just drag. If I can drag. Come on. What in the world? <laughs> there we go. And drop it, it'll upload. The PDF is actually converted into a bunch of images, so it might take a second to pop up. But it will pop up where I dropped it. And there it is. PDFs with our big walls. Sometimes you want to see multiple pages. So like with any of these applications, you can click them. Once you click them, a little toolbar pops up, either underneath it or below it or above it, or at the bottom of your screen. There's this little toolbar now. And then there's buttons for this specific uh, app. So if I want to add pages, I don't know why these buttons are disabled. But is that a bug? That's a bug. Ignore that. Those should not be disabled. But you can cycle through the pages with the arrow keys also. But also, if your students uh, want to download this PDF from the Sage application, there's a little download button right here. You can hit download PDF. And then that will download it locally to your own computer. So that quick start guide that's up at the top, you can click it and then just click download. And then you'll have that application, that PDF locally. But you can drop. PDFs, images, videos. Um, you can paste web page links. You can paste images. You can encode. So to kind of maybe I'll quickly go through all the apps. It's a calculator. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a calculator. Oh, wait, where are you? 
Upper right. Just upper right. There you go. I mean, I'm a calculator seems pretty self-explanatory. Chat. So chat is where you can you can create multiple chats all over the board. One thing that people kind of have a thing that I have to wrap around now, it's 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 a spatial space. Where you got a Rick roll. Uh, so you can drop it multiple chats all over the board. Maybe their spatial location has different meaning, but this is just like a chat like anything. But you can also, there's an AI built into it. So if you type at S, This is actually going off of chat GPT or Llama that we have running somewhere. So anytime you want to ask the AI a specific question within this chat app, you just type at S. And then you'll be, whatever you type next goes off to the AI. Code editor. So for all your coders out there, this is just essentially just like a nice little editor that's code. And it's collaborative just like the other tools I've shown. So if I, you can choose which language that you're typing in down here. You can choose, someone's already typing, so. Whoops. I messed you up, buddy. So multiple people can type into this. You can download the file, you can drop a file. That's like a piece of code. Do I have any code in here? You can drop code files, I'm not gonna show that, but you can drop Python, R files, JavaScript, TypeScript. And they'll just automatically get loaded up into this. Yeah, let me just show it. There's a C file, if I drop it, now we have a, a C file that you can edit together. You can download, share with your students or share with your collaborators. One thing that the code editor can also do is also has AI just like the chat. So if I was to switch this to say C++, and I say write me a basic OpenGL application, I like this. Down here, these orange buttons are the AI buttons. Right now it's using the AI, open AI model. And if I hit generate, it's gonna take whatever I have highlighted. Give it a second. And now it's changed what I wrote into code. It's not a very good OpenGL application, but whatever OpenAI's uh, pushback sent us. And there's other functions in there. You can have it explain code. I can highlight all this and explain. And it's gonna pop out a sticky explaining what it just does. And the other ones are comment and refactor. So if I go back to this other one, and highlight this, and just hit comment. Print a lot of the concept. You can use it for your coding exercises. And... Uh, so concerning the, I just looked at chat, sorry, the, the antivirus stuff. I would have to help you with that in person. I don't really know how to do that remotely. I don't know why Windows is flagging it as a virus, but. Uh, the next one, Hawaii Mesonet, I'm gonna skip over. That's RJ's PhD application. MapGL is just like a, a Google Maps type thing and it should sync across everybody. 
So as you zoom in, zoom out, the map changes. You can change it from street map to terrain. And if you type in an address, just like a map application. You can also drop like GeoJSONs and then if you have like GIS layers. Notepad, we kind of quickly went over, but you can also, since everybody can type in here too, you can also use this. The toolbar gives you a bunch of like basic normal WordPad type things. And yeah, Notepad's pretty self explanatory. Poll, you can set up a poll. Uh oh. Now people can vote. <laughs> Be truthful. Don't break it over. Uh, Sage Cell. So the code editor that I showed before, that's strictly just an editor. You can't really run code with that. Sage Cell is our version of Jupyter Notebooks. So this is only Jupyter. I mean, this is only Python. You can't change it to any of the other languages. But here, if I get the Sage Cell requires kernels. So that last how do I say this without confusing? So this is the safe cell editor, but it requires a kernel. There's a little quick button to be able to create a kernel right here. But to see all your kernels that you've created, the panel, the controller, there's a little kernels thing there. And now you can see the kernel I created called test is right here. These kernels are all tied to specific boards, so. You create kernels in another board, you won't have access to it. But since I tied to the test kernel, and I type some Python code, and I run it, it gets ran in the back end and sent back, the output sent back. If I, since there's only one kernel, if I create another one, and have this one also using that same kernel, and this one I set x equals 1, and this one I print x, and I print out 1. So you can have multiple safe cells, and they're all sharing the same kernel, the same variables, the same instance. But this has, it's a full Python kernel like Jupyter, so I'm going to go cheat real quick and steal this code real quick. And I paste that in here and run it. So now you have, you just created this visualization within Sage. So you can run multiple stuff. If you need to install different libraries, there's a way of doing that too. And anything I'm missing, RJ? You can also drag and drop the images that get generated here out into the board. On, on the, the C server? Yeah. No? Okay. The best. Screen share? So uh, well, it's not going to know all that detail. Screen share, I'll come right back to. The last one that's the easiest is sticky. So you can create a sticky that way, but there's a shortcut. If you keep your cursor over a part of the board and just hit Shift S, you'll create a sticky wherever you're at. And again, everybody can type into a sticky together. And you can change the color, you can change the text size. And yeah, stickies. Screen share, I don't know how this is. I might not be able to do a screen share because I'm already sharing through Zoom, but let's see. So when I do it, when I start a screen share, you should get a little thing at the bottom of the Sage thing that says, I just started a screen share. And then there's a big yellow button that says, focus on my screen. So I'll quickly push you to my screen share, your view. But multiple people can start screen shares. So if someone else wants to start a screen share, it's so unlike Zoom, you can do as many screen shares as you want, as long as the bandwidth provides. 
So you can have four students on this big wall sharing their screens all together and everybody can see everybody's work. So if someone wants to start one, Euler, anybody? <laughs> Oh, okay. But you can do that through your your own time if you want. Uh, so that's like the most basic functionality of the whole board. One thing I want to show, my screen share is going to die here. So here, Karen Lee just started a screen share, and I can focus on their screen. So that big button that popped on at the bottom I just click it and now I'm looking at their screen share. So there's two screen shares going on at the same time. Karen, I'm guessing is remote. That's okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's getting confusing just because we're, <laughs> we're screen sharing Sage within Sage. So it's kind of weird. But. Really, you should be looking at buy something else than Sage. But. How do you stop following screen share? Stop following? You should still be able to drag and move around. You focused on it, but you should be able to just move around. Okay. And if you want to stop your screen share, just delete. So every app has this, this little trash can at the end. You can just click close. And that'll stop your screen share, close any apps that you want. Uh, yeah. It's everywhere. Uh, so you can move apps by just clicking and dragging them, resize them. You can do a lasso if you hold a shift, shift and drag at the same time, and now you can move multiple apps at the same time. If you select apps of all the same type, so two stickies, you can change the stickies together. But if the apps are mismatched, they won't give you the, the option. Uh, so it's kind of hard to see because he has all the way down there. Maybe you bring Sage up a little. Yeah, there you go. Um, so that's the basic functionality on a board, all the stuff. I want to show you guys how to create rooms and boards. So if you want to be able to create a room for yourself, create your own boards. So back on the home page, there's a create room. And then it'll pop up with this little dialog. And then uh just make that bigger. So if I want to create a room that only I can access, there's a checkbox right here, room listed publicly. So when you guys went and searched for the Y Data Science Institute, it showed up. But if I'd select this, deselect it, it won't be listed there anymore. You can also add a password to your board. So if people try to join your board, join your room, I mean, they're gonna to have to enter a password to enter it. But without it being listed publicly, you shouldn't be able to see it. So Ryan's secret room, And then once you're in the room, you'll see at the top there's create board and settings. So if I want to create a board, my room has no board right now. Now there's a board. You can view boards two separate ways. There's a list or has cards. There's actual apps on there. It'll show you a little map, but now I'm in the board. So that's how, that's the only hierarchy, rooms, and then boards. When you upload assets, they're uploaded to the room level, not the board level. So any boards within that room have access to those assets. So to kind of show you, if I go back to the HIDSI, and I go back to Sage 3 introduction, this assets folder. So this is all the stuff that's been dropped on the board. It's not just this board, it's any of the boards within the Hawaii Data Science Institute has access to all these assets. But.
Um, these things at the bottom. So these are links to different boards. So if the board's on a different hub <clears throat> slash server, they'll just look like that. And that's gonna redirect you to the other server. But boards that actually have mini maps that show something, like this one, these are actually on the server. So if I click this and hit enter board, now it's gonna send me all the way to that other board. So this is how you can kind of interlock between or interconnect between boards on the same server. Am I jumping around too much? So all these are different boards. So if I go back to this one, this says articulate posters, which is RJ. There he is. So this is him setting up like using Sage as like a presentation for a class or conference? Oh no, this is a the poster that I did for the Hawaii Data Science Institute when I was a fellow. So as I was showing off my research, I created this board and then I could add like videos and images. And I went through each sticky note and each image to show what my current research is. So Sage is either chaotic collaboration, like we were just doing before, where everybody's creating stuff, and brainstorming. We're going to do it as a presentation thing. Because the alternative is to just use the basic, um, you know, uh, just a two-dimensional <laughs> basic presentation where, like, nothing, there's no animations, no videos or anything. Here it's, like, um, collaborative. People can look at other things while I'm talking or it makes it a little bit more fun. Okay. And I can access this later. So it doesn't disappear. And I can access all the assets that he's uploaded here. So usually when you share a PDF, you might not get like this. If you share a PowerPoint, I mean, you might not get all the files that are associated with it. So this PDF that's on the board, that's on his little poster, I can just download it for me to have later. Or this video, I think this is a video. Let's watch this video with RJ talk. It's okay. <laughs> it is, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, let me go back to the Y Data Science Institute. What are some of these other boards down here? So to be able to get a board link like that, um, let me go back to my, let me just copy a link here. So there's this little, on boards, there's this little link right here. It's on the list view too. Or if within in a board, if you want to copy this board's link, you click this little main menu, copy board link right here. And if I go back to the Y Data Science Institute board, zoom in and hit just control V to paste. It's now created a link to that board. So I pasted the board link into the board. Usually that board link, if you share it through email, like if I pasted this, if I shared this to someone through email, it's gonna open Sage3 and send me to that board. So that's how you can share links to boards within Sage and outside of Sage. So if you share that link via email, they would then download Sage3 to access it, or it's like, uh, hopefully they have Sage 3 installed because okay. it will automatically launch Sage 3. I don't, if, one little trick that Jason doesn't want me to tell anybody. But, but. <laughs> so you, you saw how it's a URL with Sage 3. So that tells your OS to launch the Sage 3 application. But Sage 3 is just a web application. So you can access it from Chrome. You lose some functionality. So I'm just looking at it in Chrome browser right now. You lose functionality. You don't get web views anymore. You don't get, uh, that's, you have to memorize the URL now. So that hub list that's automatically within Sage, it's all right there. But if you do log into Sage from a browser, 
you will get this download client button down at the bottom on the login page. So that will take you to that button. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And then go back to the Data Science Institute. If I'm going too fast, I guess it's already over. <laughs> I guess I'm been going too fast all the time, but it's a lot to cover real quickly. One little exercise that we did with last time was everybody uploaded two pictures of their favorite things or something to the board just so you get used to uploading something and people post the pictures of their dogs and cats. Can I do that? Yeah, for the people that are in, there's only eight people on the board, so. Okay, so we'll do an activity. <laughs> We'll have everyone open up a sticky note, write down your name, your major, and then upload an image of something that makes you happy. Makes you happy. Yeah, I'll do it for everybody right now. Oh, there you go. So this is an example. I'll write down what your, um, your research interests are too. I think that's very, very interesting. <laughs> My research interest. Yeah, while people are doing this, I kind of forgot the one application. Under stickies, there's one called web views. This is what you wouldn't get on the browser if you access Sage on the browser. But it's essentially just a, a browser within Sage. So if you paste the URL to any website, it will open this. You can also go to different websites. One thing I have to say about web views is they're not always synchronized. The web's very unpredictable from person to person. If I go to Amazon and you go to Amazon, you're gonna see a different landing page. So don't think these are completely synced. Usually if the, we try to have like, if if it gets out of sync, we try to try to alert you with this little eyeball down there with like, I, it's not synced, but it's best just to anticipate that it's not synced. Well, some other web pages. Videos. I didn't do videos. Cash money. Asking a picture. <laughs> what was it? Cash money. Uh, so this is videos. Also, you can upload videos. Videos we attempt to sync as best as we can. And by that, I mean latency. If you have a really slow internet, your video might not keep up. So you don't want to make everybody's video slow down. So your video might get a little out of sync. Um, you can download them just like everything else. You can also make them loop. There's a little loop button right here. So if I had that on the loop, once the video gets to the end, it'll loop back. There it goes again playing. All right, let's see what people put. How can I explain the isolated line elements of four? Hmm. We don't have any search yet. Should, should oh yeah. So this uh if you want to see who created the board, 
Where did the apps? Well, not every app lists it correctly. Though. So under the main menu button right here, there's a option called visibility. And application titles is listed here. We turn them off by default because it really kind of clutters the board. And now every app should have a little title above it. And stickies will have the person's name attached to it, whoever created it. Images are going to list the file name that's attached to it. Uh, doesn't really solve your issue, but I know what you're asking. You're like, you want to be able to find just your apps, which we don't have yet. But you're one of the first people to ask that. So that could be a feature that. Way which is possible. We have a tag. We, we know who created all the apps. We just have to make it fly. Uh, someone posted money, so that was Jason. <clears throat> geography. She doesn't know. If, you don't know if you're in geography? <laughs> okay. Rhino beetles, remote sensing LiDAR. Looking on rhino beetles? Oh, one flew on our balcony the other day. Pretty big. These things? Yeah. They look pretty scary. <laughs> so again, with images, you can copy the image just to your clipboard and paste it. And it's on the board now. Uh let's see what else we have. Kevin Lim. Lecturer. Are you a computer science lecturer? ICS lecturer. Yes. Um, John, software engineer, Institute for Astronomy. Look for space rocks. Helps looks for space rocks. Do you work with Karen Meech? Is that her name, Jason? Karen Meech? A little. A little? Okay. Oh, love if a little. <laughs> it's love, I am not. Okay. How they? Your graphics. Is that your dog? No, I oh. oh, Jerry. It's pretty trippy. <clears throat> uh Jerry from Maui. Is that your dog, Jerry? Let's see if you can type into the that's Yeah, funny. that's my dog. That's Melee. And the uh, the cave picture too is one that I've been tracking. That you was know, pretty fancy looking. Notice the curved <laughs> corners. That's all LEDs. Also. For the web view. So this is a web view that Jerry pasted. If you want to open it from like locally without seeing it in Sage. So if you click select the web view, and then down here you can copy the URL, but then there's also a button open in desktop. So if you click that, now I've just opened it on my desktop. It's a lot of little features all scattered throughout Sage. I can't really cover every little piece. And if you have any issues. Or bugs that you find, 
we can post them to our for the for the young ones out there. There's a Discord channel where you can post them. Where is that Discord channel? I think it's where you guys downloaded it. There's a link to it. Speech. Uh, uh, support. So slow. So slow. Yeah, so our Discord channel is listed right here. And then it's just a uh, stage three support. You can post me and Luke or any of the other developers will message you. I think Jerry's posted here before. There's also a GitHub that you can go, you can make issues there or if you want to contribute. <laughs> there's also a new thing that we added. There's a feedback button within Sage now. You can send send me dirty messages. And I get sent off. So it's an easier way just to do it within Sage. But if you want like instant reply back, Discord is the best. It's usually during working hours, me and Luke will reply. Um, what's it food? Food. I'm hungry right now, so it's, it's like jambalaya or something. It's very on very on very everyone tenant. Oh, this is you. pickleball. <laughs> it's like CrossFit now. Everybody that talks about pickleball won't stop talking about pickleball. Okay. You think I got everything, Jason? Javon. Yeah, I mean, you may want to explain scenarios. How do you, how do you use this in real life? Oh, that's what the meetings and classroom classes. So here's a. Oh, sorry, can you look to the. Use those. <laughs> Uh, brainstorming, comparing approaches. So you can use these for brainstorming. So um, in our lab, sometimes we'll get together and then we'll try to address how to solve a certain problem. And then we'll have a bunch of the students in the lab all create like sticky notes on how they think they might approach the problem. And then we all synthesize together what's the um, ultimate approach that we're going to be using. Um, this on the picture on the right is an example of what we did for the video game class that I taught. So I had students create their own boards and groups, and then they had to come up with a concept or design their own video game um, from scratch. So in the beginning of class, they all opened up images of games that they found interesting. And they found common themes that they liked between the games. And then throughout the weeks, they used that as um, the kind of motivation that, of the game that they want to build by the end of class. And, th and then throughout the weeks, they, came, they kept coming back to this board and added sketches. And then they went on to create their own game. This works so express. <clears throat> ICS three six nine. I think it's in the Hawaii server. Hawaii server. Hawaii three six nine. No. Hawaii four. No. Video games spot. See. Join them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so introductions. Probably this was what your first day of class. 
people introducing themselves using stickies. Yeah. And then, like you said, each student probably has their own board. So Mika Joby. Everyone, uh, or everyone, um, that's all their names combined into one. <laughs> um, evil Pets Brainstorm. Yeah, this is how people use it in the real world. Some people are really organized. <laughs> I will say like the most popular app, which we can see just from the databases is Stickies. Stickies allows people to quickly brainstorm and they create spatial layouts and then you drop pictures. And if I go back to the, I think there's a couple boards here at the bottom. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill this Wendy. So Wendy, so one thing, if you open a web page within Sage, you kind of have to be cautious of if that web page is really intense. So you don't want to open Shader Labs within Sage because it's just like it's going to make everybody's computer render Shader Labs. So visualization board now, Epscore Brainstorm. This 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 board is on a different server hub, so it's going to ask me. I can ask me anything. It's going to take me right there. So this is one brainstorming with a bunch of stickies and lines and drawings. And as, as the project goes, one thing I can notice just looking at this board is they probably started over here because everything's kind of tiny. And then as there's a, there's a habit, as people's boards get older, the stickies get bigger and bigger and bigger because they're trying to make they create a new sticky and they're like, look at my sticky. So they make it a little bigger than all the other stickies. Oh. Not really important, but. And one thing that the, this little spread, this PowerPoint showed, a lot of people use the Sage just for this. They just use it to screen share, which is fine, but you're kind of missing out on all the abilities of Sage. It does allow screen sharing to these big walls really easily and multiple people. And screen sharing is awesome. We do it all the time. But one thing that we do during our meetings in the lab is someone's screen sharing, they're showing their progress. But then as he's screen sharing, other students are dropping stuff that's relevant to whatever he's talking about. He's talking about Unity. He's like, I'm using this new 3D model. People are like, well, there's better 3D models. We could use this one. We could use this one. And they're just dropping stuff on the board, kind of supplement the meeting. Instead of just being a presenter and a listener, there's also this feeling during the meeting that people are contributing during the meeting. And it kind of makes the students a little more engaged. Not just a little bit, but actually a lot more like engaged in the meeting. It becomes a proper meeting instead of just lecture. This is something Jason did. He had the students go into the Thunderdome together, Jason. I'm batting Thunderdome. <laughs> Where the two students were presenting their two projects side by side. Three. Three. I gave them all the same assignment. <clears throat> to take a data set and call them and make visualizations off of it. So three students each presented their approach. And I asked them to put a debate with each other. Why did you use this approach? What is it that? Like, oh, I use color purpose and this person to do it. And then kind of sort of voted who was, who was the winner. The two non winners had to move off, and then two other competitors went to win, and then it's not like other don't fight. So who survives at the end? Research meeting. Um, oh, that's the um, example you just showed. But this one is showing how you can upload 
uh, research papers on the top too. And then we can all come together and make notes about the research papers that we found. And what we're working on is adding more AI stuff. So all that sticky notes that you see right next to all these PDFs at the top were handwritten. But imagine if you drop the PDF and AI just summarizes the paper. And then it tries to find how these papers are related. You drip, you drop those six papers up there, but then it can say, hey, these papers are related this how this author is on this paper and this paper. So all this work that you had to do grad labor, now it can just be done with AI. And the grads can focus more on the ideas than all this time reading papers. That should be that's in the pipeline for like within the year to have that type of functionality. Um, reporting in the field. So this is kind of, since it's accessible from anywhere, Sage, you can access it while you're in Japan or you're you know, somewhere else. So Jason, even students, when they go on vacation, this isn't really reporting in the field, but when they go on vacations and they're in Japan or something, we can drop pictures up on a board and we can look at them on our big wall uh, as they're on their travels. But you can imagine this being done actually reporting in the field. You're out taking samples and stuff and want to upload images for your colleagues and stuff. Custom dashboard. So RJ is going to show something real quick. Oops, I'm moving hey, on. Are we over? Okay. Good. How long are we supposed to talk for? Oh, we had one for a full three. I'm not going to talk till three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have RJ show his little you just want me to go to it? Um, yeah. Was it on here? Here? Hurricane okay, Watch. So this board always exists. So you can make these little dashboards and you can always come back and access this. So RJ, I was just let RJ explain. I'm tired of talking. So this is what I've been working on for, uh, or this is what I'm funded to work on in the lab to create a visualization tool that connects to the Hawaii Climate Data Portal. So the Hawaii Climate Data Portal is a repository that holds a bunch of climate data, and it's being built by Tom Jambaluka here at UH Manoa. And they have an ongoing project to install um, 100 stations all throughout Hawaii. And the stations look like this. So it, they look like this here. And they're all measuring different kinds of climate data. So like air temperature, um, solar radiation, solar incoming radiation, solar outgoing radiation, um, sea pressure, soil moisture, you know, a bunch of different climate data. And I'm creating a visualization tool that connects to that repository to help people create visualizations. Because if you guys ever created visualizations on your own, you know, it could be time consuming, right? And you need to know how to program. So this dashboard was created just using my tool. And uh, this is a dashboard I quickly created to look at the the hurricane that was supposed to be coming this weekend. So I have uh, the wind speeds for the past 24 hours for each island. I selected a few stations from every island. So this representing Kauai, this is representing Oahu, Molokai, Maui, and the Big Island. And so you can tell by the charts here, um, it kind of shows you like the maximum wind speed for each of these islands. So I guess uh, the big island, it got to like around six and it's like slowly dropping because the hurricane didn't come. It's it's a it's called a post-tropical storm. That's what it's classified now as. And I think it, it, it got to Maui. And then Molokai, the wind speed stayed pretty much by around like three. It was doubled in Maui and kind of doubled in the on the Big Island. 
And then I can also supply this dashboard with other repositories like windy.com and I could you know see another visualization there. So this is just like a like a meta dashboard of all the repositories and, and data that I want to look at. And just to give you guys a little example of how to create um, or the, the tool that I was creating. So in the application menu, my application is called the Hawaii Mesonet. Click on that. It'll figure. And then ooh, zoom in. So I have a few stations selected by the blue circles. But if I click on the app and click on select stations, these are all the stations that are currently installed. I think there's around, I think, 40 or so, where the red ones are the ones that are selected and the white ones are unselected. So just to give you guys another example, unselect those. Maybe I want to visualize some charts on the Big Island. And then those are the three circles, or three stations. And then, so this is currently showing the soil moisture for these stations. But if I want to see the data, like historical data, I made this button where people can just select, oh, they want to see it as a line chart. And this is showing the past 24 hours of the soil moisture on those stations. Um, I can duplicate the chart again, position it here and select on, maybe I want to see it for the prior week. I can also, I can also duplicate these again. And say I wanted to see the same kind of historical data at the same visualization, but for a different variable. So they can ch choose and see which variables these stations are measuring. So they have, again, wind speed, relative humidity, air temperature, net radiation, and so on. I just select air temperature. And then this is showing the temperature in Celsius um, for the prior past 24 hours and then past week. So I, I try to make it really easy for someone to create their own dashboards and start understanding climate data. Yes. Okay. So are you using the uh, RTIS plugin or are you using like REST area? What are you using to show the maps? So to show the maps, I'm using um, a JavaScript library called MapGL. So this is like his Sage application that he wrote for the PhD. It's all focused on why climate data for the problem. But it's kind of just showing you how Sage can be used to be able to create dashboards. So if you wanted to create like a dashboard within Sage, like this, you could create a new app, give it more data, different data instead of the auto like data. Or I don't know if you want to get into. Let's not do plugins. That's a little more technical. What's Jason wants? I hear a lot. For the people in the audience that are web developers and are curious what plugins are, you can ask me. Every Friday, you guys have a meeting to get some stats and make sure, like, Essentially allows you to upload any type of web application you made and just make it an app within Sage by just zipping it up and dragging it in there. More for JavaScript developers, so I don't want to confuse everybody. What could you do with some mapping? That's MapGL. It would show that. <laughs> so if you're using R, you should be able to export it as GeoJSON player. We have a viewer within Sage, just drive it to your JSON file. 
Here's a GeoJSON. Hopefully this works. Yeah. So I just dropped the GeoJSON. This is the West Side Solar Farm, actually. It's from Line Did notice a little bug with MapGeo when I was doing this, so I'll have to fix that. But so all this, it was just a GeoJSON. Most shape files can be converted to GeoJSON, and you can drag and drop. Okay. Um, that first landing screen when we installed it, if you ever want to get back to it, just have to hit hubs at the top and return the hub list. It also lists all the hubs right here. And that'll take you back to the hub list. One server that's really fast that nobody uses, if you really want to just Use a server that not everybody else is on. It's gesturing. It's really fast, and nobody's on there. It's in Indiana. It's in Indiana, but it's like proper enterprise servers. The Hawaii servers are just Alienware desktops. That's in the room next door. So. so, any questions or? Concerns, it's clear as mud. And you don't need a big display ball to use it. Just use it with your, with your laptop, just take laptops. You've got a projector at work or your app, professor. You can just plug your computer into the projector and basically you can just show save and then you can say it as a display. Or you can go to you know, uh, Home Depot or Best Buy and Costco, buy yourself some big TVs and put them together and get that same response. Home Depot, add unlisted hub. Um, what? <laughs> so, uh, you can all of Sage. Server so, Sage is completely open source. So, you can set up your own server, it's all dockerized. So to have a publicly accessible uh, domain and have certificates. And you can set up your own server. So if I had another server, um, if I knew the URL of it, I'll just put it in there and then I'll add it to this list. So I think that's about it. You create a room that you don't want anymore. So Ryan's secret room, you can just hit settings and hit the lead. It's gone. I had a the box. quick. Go ahead. Hi, uh, it's Jerry Isdale. I had a question on uh, licensing. I dropped oh. it into the chat. Um, it's a Jason. Question. As an NSF project, are there commercial restrictions from use? You're free to use it. Um, internally, you don't have to pay for it. The only time you have to, have to license, I mean, you want to do a license at the university, is if you plan to take it and turn it into a product that you want to sell to somebody else. Does that make sense, Spirit? That, uh, that makes sense. If we were to, uh, as I put in the, the chat, uh, if we were to offer the use of it for conventions, uh, business meetings and so forth, would that be uh, require licensing? Yep. Or if you, only, if you, only if you somehow make a profit and you're a company. I think if you're not a company, we, we are, honestly, we'd love you to use it. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's just that it's you know, paid for by National Science Foundation. And the intent is that National Science Foundation wants to support 
educational and research institutions, right? So if you're a for-profit, kind of expect for-profit to help by either licensing it or paying some kind of subscription or paying, you know, collaborating with the uh, with the university in some capacity. Okay, we may need to uh, talk to you a little bit more about that in, de in detail in a little while. Okay. And uh, working, uh, trying to get the PDC folks over here to be uh, more interested again. Oh, okay. But isn't PDC kind of part of UH in some way? Or are they I... trying to sell a product? I think they do sell their stuff as a product. Um, the Pacific Data Center, uh, Pacific yeah. Disaster Center folks, um, no, it wasn't, they were going to, uh, what I was looking with them is to say, uh, trying it as a collaborative tool for their internal work, because they do a lot of distributed, uh, development. Okay. And just to see how it works in that sort of an environment. I'm not sure okay. what their, uh, official connection is to UH, if at all. Uh, it's different than uh, Carl Kim's disaster center folks. Right. I thought they were affiliated with UH. So I, I also don't think there's any problem with you just using it and introducing it to them or using it in PDC. Um, okay. Well, you know, we were talking with them a little while ago, and I got to go back and I, I put an email back to them uh, recently because I was. Distracted by teaching classes over at uh, UH Maui this summer. Okay. Yeah. Okay, girl. No problem. Let's go. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you all. Hi, Alberto. <laughs> Alberto's there? Alberto's here. Yeah, I wanted to take a look at the state of it. It looks amazing. Uh, oh, eh? so much things you've done. Oh, my God. Um, do you hear me? I'll take positive feedback. <laughs> yeah.